Hello, my name is Gustavo Eresi. I'm a lung doctor at the Cleveland Clinic, where I direct the pulmonary hypertension and CTEF programs. This presentation will give you more knowledge about treatment for CTEF, or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. If left untreated, CTEF is a deadly condition. Fortunately, it is perhaps the most treatable form of pulmonary hypertension, where even cure is oftentimes possible. The treatment of choice for CTAF is a surgical procedure called pulmonary thromboendarterectomy, or PTE, sometimes referred to as pulmonary endarterectomy, or PEA. In the US, we usually use the term PTE. This operation has a proven track record over several decades and it offers a definitive cure for many patients with chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. This is why, as soon as the diagnosis of CTEF is made, you should be evaluated at a medical center with experience and expertise in performing PTE surgery. After this evaluation, some people are deemed not good candidates for surgery. For people in whom surgery is not possible or indicated, there are two other treatment options, medications to dilate small pulmonary arteries and or a procedure called balloon pulmonary angioplasty, so-called BPA. Now doctors look at three main factors to decide who is a good candidate for the operation called pulmonary thromboendarterectomy. The first one is whether or not the chronic blood clots are located in big enough arteries so that they can be reached by the surgical instruments. The second question is whether or not the pulmonary pressure elevation is accounted for by the amount of pulmonary clots. And finally, you have to be otherwise strong enough to be able to sustain a big operation. If the answer to these three questions is yes, then PTE surgery is a good idea and the treatment of choice for CTEF. The main challenge, however, is that these decisions are complex, largely subjective, and shaped by the team's experience and expertise. This is why this determination needs to be made in an expert center. Importantly, older age and obesity do not routinely represent absolute barriers for this operation. This operation is done through a chest wall incision, the same incision used for heart bypass surgery. Then, doctors stop the heart, drain the blood from the heart and lung arteries, and cool the person's body to about 60 degrees, which prevents brain damage. The surgeon then peels the scar clot tissue lining the pulmonary arteries. Performing a PTE requires a dedicated team and a highly skilled surgeon. The usual hospital stay is about 10 to 14 days. Some people notice immediate and dramatic improvements in breathing capacity, while for others, it may be a more gradual process. You will be able to gradually resume your activities over the following four to six weeks. Rehabilitation with supervised exercise is often helpful. Oxygen supplementation may be needed for some time after surgery you will be discharged on blood thinners, which are to be continued for life. By three to six months after successful PTE surgery, most people are able to resume normal or near normal levels of activity 
and lead normal, productive lives. Doctors will frequently evaluate you for improvements in exercise capacity and pulmonary pressures, as well as for potential complications. We do testing such as the six minute walk test, echocardiography, ventilation perfusion scan, and right heart catheterization during the first three to six months after surgery. These tests can be done at the PT center or with your local pulmonary hypertension doctors. Like with any other major operation, not surviving the procedure is the most serious potential outcome. Currently, in experienced centers, risk of death after PT surgery is way under 5%. Immediately after surgery, fluid accumulation in the lungs and bleeding are the most important complication. Pulmonary pressures can remain elevated after surgery. Even if pulmonary pressures return to normal immediately after surgery, they can increase again several months or years later. The CTEF team will assess how likely these complications are for you and factor these into the decision to offer surgery. Now, what about the other treatment option called balloon pulmonary angioplasty or BPA? In general, angioplasty is a catheter-based procedure well established in its application for treating blocked vessels in the heart and brain. Its application in the lungs is called balloon pulmonary angioplasty or BPA. In this procedure, a rubber tube or catheter is placed through a blood vessel into the pulmonary arteries and inflatable balloons are then used to open up occluded vessels. Today, several centers in Japan and increasingly in the US and Europe are using modern equipment and techniques for this procedure with good results. While BPA is far less invasive than PTE and patients are awake during the procedure, the arteries in the lungs are fragile and vulnerable to perforation. Moreover, BPA must be performed in at least four to five separate sessions, and sometimes even more. And this process, some people might find difficult. So importantly, BPA is currently indicated only for people in whom PTE surgery is not indicated or not possible. Regarding medical therapy for CTEF, every patient with CTEF needs to be on a blood thinner for life. This remains true even after successful PTE surgery. Warfarin or Coumadin continues to be the preferred blood thinner as doctors have decades of successful experience of this particular blood thinner in C10. Whether or not the new blood thinners are as effective and safe is not very clear at the moment. Either way, blood thinners just prevent new blood clots from forming, but they do not address the scar clot tissue or the pulmonary pressure elevation. Treating CTEF with medication is only indicated if you have been properly evaluated by an expert center and deemed not to be a good candidate for pulmonary thromboendarterectomy surgery. Medication is also appropriate for pulmonary pressure elevation that remains after surgery. Currently, there is only one FDA-approved pill for this indication called Riosiwet. This medication can also be used if you are left with pulmonary hypertension after PTE. Under these circumstances, this medication is known to improve symptoms and relieve pressure elevation in the lungs. Your medical team may also choose to use other medications that are approved for other forms of pulmonary hypertension. Now, importantly, while PTE is very effective, 
up to half of patients can be left with PH when measured via right heart catheterization three to six months after surgery. Some of these patients are doing well and just require careful monitoring to make sure pulmonary hypertension doesn't get worse. However, some patients, as stated before, can benefit from medical therapy and even balloon pulmonary angioplasty after surgery. This is why ongoing monitoring with your pulmonary hypertension or CTEF center is needed even after successful surgery. So in conclusion, I encourage you to continue to learn more about CTEF and connect with other CTEF patients through the Pulmonary Hypertension Association. Thank you.